Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over several regression exercises. The data set uh, is actually based on the theory of planned behavior, um, and it's simulated data based on summary uh, um, uh, presentation uh, in this article um, right here uh, by this author and uh, th these authors. And so they were essentially predicting entrepreneurial intentions and uh, behavior. And um, so uh, what we're going to do in this particular uh, case, first of all, let's define our terms. Entrepreneurial intentions is the expressed intention to engage in entrepreneurial beha uh, behavior. Um, attitude is how positively individuals feel about starting a new business. Subjective norms is the belief that others uh, in their social network would, in, would uh, value and engage in entrepreneurship. And then perceived behavioral control is the perceived control over circumstances that would lead to engagement in entrepreneurial behavior. So uh, the first exercise is to run a simultaneous multiple regression with attitude, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control as predictors of intention. So what we're going to do, this is the data set, we're going to go to analyze regression linear. We are going to put um, intention as the dependent variable, so this is that variable. Then we're going to put attitude, subjective norms, and perceived uh, behavioral control into the independence box. And um, and uh, we're going to basically run the analysis. So you can see in our model summary table, we've got uh, the R square value right here. That's the coefficient of determination. The F value, which is testing uh, essentially R square for statistical significance. And then if if we determine that that's statistical, statistically significant, then we go down and we look at the individual predictors. So you know the standard multiple regression model essentially has. Um, two or more independent variables and you're predicting variation and a dependent variable. So essentially we've got um, uh, intention being predi predicted by uh, attitudes, uh, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control. So that's essentially uh, the model. And so I'm going to also draw little correlations among um, our uh, independent variables as well. So essentially the the R square value um, is computed is essentially the proportion of variation and in intentions that's being accounted for by the set of predictors. So um, the omnibus test is really addressing, uh, you know, sort of the the combin the uh, uh, contribution of the set of predictors uh, when it comes to explaining variation in the dependent variable. So. Um, at any rate, uh, um, and the R square value is actually computed by taking these sums of squares over here. So you'll notice that we have uh, the sum of squares total. That is the uh, sum of squares uh, in intention. So that's the sum of squares total. And it's essentially break, broken down into sum of squares that's due to the regression. Uh, in, in other words, you're, you're capturing predictable variation and then sum of squares due to the residual and that's variation that is uh, unpredictable from the model. So um, you can see that essentially when we look at our uh, sums of squares, we have the sum of squares due to the regression which is 322.781 so that's the regression I'll just say R, E, and then G right here and then sum of squares due to the residual. So I'm going to put R, E, and then an S right here. So the R square value that's computed is a ratio of the sum of squares due to the regression divided by the sum of squares total. Okay, so the null hypothesis is that the R-square is equal to zero within the population. The alternative is that it's greater than zero. So the F-test is allowing us to test that. And we, we have a p-value right here, which is um, less than conventional uh, alpha 0.05. So we're going to reject the null and infer that the population R-square is significantly greater than zero. So then we go down, we look at the individual uh, predictors in the model to, to um, you know, see which ones are contributing to the variation, um, or at least uniquely to the variation. So we have attitude, uh, there's a positive coefficient. We would interpret that to mean that for every one unit increase on attitude, uh, there's a predicted uh, increase on intention of 0.191 um, uh, units controlling for the other two predictors. You can see that uh, the T value is just formed by taking the uh, regression coefficient dividing by a standard error. 
and you can see that uh, for the t-test, let's just say that we're we're going to adopt a two-tailed criteria, and then uh, you know the p-values right here are all for two-tailed tests. So uh, we would just infer that there's a significant uh, predictive relationship between attitude and intention. When we look at um, the standardized coefficient, you'll notice that uh, it is 0.226, and so we would interpret this to mean that for every one z-score unit increase on attitude, there's a predicted increase of 0.226 z-score units on intention. Um, and so essentially you're talking about changes in uh, standard score units on the dependent variable for every one unit, uh, one uh, standard score unit increase on uh, the independent variable. So the reason why these can be useful is that they can be helpful in terms of rank ordering the relative uh, the predictors in terms of their uh, re their uh, relative unique contributions uh, to the model. Uh, whereas the unstandardized coefficients are scale dependent, so then that creates some problems in terms of rank ordering. So then we look at subjective norms. You can see it's positive and uh, statistically significant. So, in other words, when perceived norms are higher, there's uh, ex uh, greater expressed intention to engage in entrepreneurial behavior. And then perceived behavioral control is also positive, meaning that uh, and significant, uh, indicating that um, greater perceived uh, behavioral control is associated with greater intentions. Uh, when we go back and look at our standardized coefficients, we can say that you know, subjective norms actually had the highest. Um, unique predictive uh, contribution to the model, followed by um, PBC, followed by attitude. So there's number three right there. That's kind of rank ordering them. Um, also keep in mind that um, if you happen to have a predictor, let's say that, uh, let's just say for argument's sake that PBC, that number had been negative 0.189 instead of positive 189. Then in that particular case, we would interpret the unstandardized coefficient to mean that for everyone um, raw score unit increase on PBC, there would be a predicted decrease of 0.189 units on uh, intention after controlling for the other predictors. So that's essentially how to interpret um, these uh, results here. So that's the first model. Now let's look at a second one. We're, now we're going to look at um, ex uh, exercise two right here where we're going to run a simultaneous multiple regression with attitude, subjective norms, perceived behavioral control, and intentions as predictors of entrepreneurial behavior. So um, basically the idea is that the behavior variable was obtained later uh, whereas these were uh, measured at an earlier time. So now we're going to uh, look to see what each of these contributions are. So I'm going to move intention down here to block the, the block here and move behavior over to the dependent box and click on OK. And so now you can see our R square value is 0.236. So we would interpret that to mean that um, the predictors as a set accounted for about 23.6% uh, of the variation. Um, is that statistically significant? Um, we look down here at the ANOVA test. We see that our p-value that's printed out is less than, again, conventional 0.05 level. Um, and so we would say that, yeah, we would infer that uh, the population R-square is significantly greater than zero. Um, and so then we would uh, move down to looking at the individual predictors in the model. Note too, uh, I didn't mention above, but we have R square and we have adjusted R square. The adjusted R square is, uh, as you can guess, an adjustment to this value right here uh, for the number of predictors and your sample size. And what happens is, is that when you have smaller sample size and larger number of predictors, it ends up uh, you off, uh, ends up uh, with a circumstance of overestimating the population R square. So this is sort of a computational solution to that problem by adjusting the R square downward. And so when there's a really large sample size and fewer predictors, you see less of an adjustment right here than you might see. Uh, you know, if we had run the same model on 20 subjects, you would have seen quite a different uh, difference between uh, R square and adjusted R square. So uh, where there are more substantial differences, then you might want to report on uh, both both the R squares and significance tests, and then the adjusted R square. Uh, the R over here is called the multiple correlation. So uh, R square is called the coefficient of determination. R is uh, the uh, multiple correlation. It's essentially interpreted on a scale from zero to one. 
um, and it's uh, interpreted, uh, the magnitude of it's interpreted uh, as you would interpret the magnitude of any correlation coefficient. Uh, the values will never be negative and so it will, like I said, it just ranges from 0 to 1 and so um, so it's essentially the correlation between the set of independent variables and the dependent variable. Um, so looking at um, the coefficients table right here we see the attitude has a positive uh, predictive relationship between uh, you know with um, with uh, behavior and you can see that that uh, predictor in the model is statistically significant. Uh, we see that subjective norm has a um, it, the coefficient is indicating a positive predictive relationship, but then we also see that um, it's not statistically significant in the model, um, which is uh, not a surprise because you know the basic theory of planned behavior model um, assumes uh, essentially that you know you have your uh, attitude, behavior, uh, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control, and those factors uh, predict intention. And intention, in turn, should predict um, the uh, behavior. So the you can see right here that the, it's essentially postulating a mediation, mediated effects between attitude, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control on behavior, and uh, the fact that uh, subjective norms dropped to non-significance. We also see actually that perceived behavioral control dropped. To non significance as well. Um, you also see kind of a, uh, a negative coefficient right here. Um, so uh, it's round, it's in scientific notation, but basically uh, this is just indicating that, um, you know, if we were just looking at the coefficient, it would just indicate that higher scores on PBC are associated with lower scores on uh, entrepreneurial behaviors. But um, like I said, it's not significant, so it's not even worth interpreting. Neither of those two are. Um, uh, interestingly, there have been links that have been found in uh, previous studies uh, between uh, PBC and behavior, and that was not found right here. And attitude, um, typically, uh, that you know, there's not really a, a treatment of a, of a direct effect, um, but in this particular uh, uh, data, it looks like there actually may be a direct effect. Uh, and as usual, intention is the strongest predictor of behavior and uh, it's uh, statistically uh, significant. So, you know, basically what's going on is um, that again, you know, we, we essentially see that attitude in this particular model um, and what we were just testing, we see that attitude in the previous model, attitude, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral control were predictors of intention. In this model, uh, we see that intention and attitude were both contributors to the variation and behavior, but, but neither subjective norms nor uh, perceived behavioral control were. When we look at the uh, standardized coefficients right here, as we would expect, the intention link is the strongest link within the model, so it's this link right here. Uh, with uh, behavior. And then uh, we see attitude kind of hangs in there as a predictor and then uh, again these other two don't really uh, factor in. So the last demonstration, now we're going to look at exercise 3. We're going to run a stepwise regression with um, all of the previous variables included as predictors of behavior. So in this particular um, case right here we're going to go to analyze regression linear and instead of uh, simultaneously entering the predictors, we're going to go to stepwise. Um, now, when we start, you know, including uh, stepwise or hierarchical um, um, regression and so forth, then we want to also click on R squared change uh, to look at the changes in R squared between models. So we're going to click on continue and then on OK, and you can see that in our model summary table, we have um, in the first model we've got predictors intention. And um, so that was the lone predictor in that model, and uh, it essentially accounted for 22.1% of the variation in behavior. Um, you can see that the R square is uh, statistically significant. Um, and then for the second model, you have intention and attitude. So it's added in the next strongest predictor, and the R square value is 0.235, meaning that both intention and attitude accounted for about 23.5% of the variation. That model was statistically significant. If you look over here at R square change, you can see that this is a change from model 1 to model 2 in the R square value, and that was 
uh, 0.014. So by adding in attitude, we accounted for an additional 1.4% of the variation. And that change was statistically significant. When we look at um, the coefficients, for models one and two, we see that again intention was the, the significant uh, predictor in that model. That was the strongest predictor, as we really already knew. Um, and uh, you know the standardized coefficient. This is essentially a simple regression, and the standardized coefficient in a simple regression is going to equal Pearson's R. So that's actually the Pearson's R between intention and behavior. And so you can see it's a pretty strong relationship. Uh, when you look at the uh, you know test for the regression coefficient, you can see it's statistically significant for model two. When we added in attitude alongside intention, we see that again both of those predictors were statistically significant, and uh, the strongest of the two is again is going to be intention. So uh, that pretty much covers uh, the um, the exercises.